Welcome back to Ducoscopy TV. I'm Monica Gibson and I'm joined in the studio once again by independent market strategist Bruno Estier. On our previous sessions, we've looked at the Nikkei, the S&P 500 and long-term cycles. Today, we're going to be looking at bringing it all together and looking at how one impacts the other. Bruno, thank you very much for coming in today. Hello, Monica. Thank you. Now, if you could talk us through um, the sort of different correlations that we can see and how, just what impact that these different things that we have discussed in the past have on each other. Right. Uh, to start with, we would like to, to see the correlation between uh, the yen weakness and the strength of the Nikkei. As we, we all know, we heard on the papers, uh, the devaluation of the yen allows exporters in Japan to, to be... Uh, have a better outlook and therefore the Nikkei was going up. And here you have a correlation computed on 20 weeks. As you see, these are, you have three graphs here. On the top you have uh, the Nikkei, which has been moving from 8,000 to uh, 16,000. In the middle you have this measure, middle panel measure of correlation, which is between plus one and minus one. And as we see now, uh, the correlation between the Nikkei and the yen weakness is negative. That means that when the yen is weak, the negative correlation implies that the Nikkei is going to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. And at, at the bottom, just for your eyes, is the, the evolution of the yen weakness, which is the inverse of the dollar yen. And you see that this correlation since the beginning of uh, 2013 has been relatively stable at minus one. However, we'd like to move to the next chart, which is a daily correlation. And you will see, for example, on the right side of the chart, that within the period where the correlation on the long term was always minus one, you have some kind of spice going back to zero. That means during small period of time, there is no more correlation between the two asset class, the Nikkei and the yen weakness. So now we remember that we have been looking at the yen, and the yen has been moving from 132 uh, on the top of this graphic, which is a uh, yen weakness, down to 100, which is corresponding also to the dollar yen 100 uh, mark. And we see the rising green trend line, which suggests that probably there is going to be a rebound. On the next chart, we'll see that effectively, during April and May, we have a market which has been narrowing like within a small triangle, a descending triangle called a wedge in technical analysis terms. And when the compression was small enough, it break out of it and back to the beginning of the pattern, which was in beginning of April around 107. Once that movement is done, it is likely that the yen again become here on this graphic, weaker, that means that the dollar yen will move higher. And we will see what implication it has on the next chart, which is the Nikkei. Yes, that's what I was going to ask. What sort of other implications does this have on other markets? That's right. Uh, we had shown this chart last time, where there was, uh, was rising to the top of 16,000, uh, which is the blue line on the top, which is the basic long-term resistance coming from 1989. And now we see that this uh, movement of the Nikkei has moved back to this cloud, this red part in the middle of the chart. And this level is about 12,600. And if we move now from this monthly chart to the short term, uh, we'll see that this decline now has been hovering around 12,600. Not, it doesn't come exactly to the level, but it is around 12,500, 600, but it hasn't closed very often below. And now it is probably going to start to rebound because right now it is around 13,000. The oscillator on the downside just shows that it moved from something which was overbought to oversold and probably going to confirm the possibility to have rising Nikkei, and as we see on the top part, we have represented uh, in green uh, the, the yen, which has been rising during this small correction since the, the late May, could move back down again while the Nikkei is moving up. 
Uh, perhaps you could, taking all that into consideration, you could introduce to us the correlations it has on other maybe asset classes if we look at... Um, That's right. And uh, you remember that the big discussion was why are the people in Japan uh, moving... Uh, what are they doing with their bonds and are they going to move to other asset classes, for example, the U.S. bonds. And we see that this correlation also between the 10-year U.S. bonds, which is on the upper part of the charts, and the yen weakness that we have on the lower part. And in the middle, we have the correlation. And on this 20-day correlation, we see that it goes up and down. It is not stable at all. So there are periods where, obviously, in the market, you can see uh, when the yen is weaker, uh, also, you, uh, and that means if the yen is weaker, the dollar is stronger, so that people may be buying dollar bonds mm -hmm. okay, from Japan. Uh, you see this period where there is an impact direct on the U.S. market uh, of the, on the bond side. But it is not something stable, so the technical analyst has to look into these different aspects little by little. If we go to the next chart, <coughs> We see there that the correlation on a longer term basis is much more stable, but recently it is almost back to zero. So there seems to be no more correlation between Japanese investor buying US T bond. Sort of gone through the cycle then it would seem. It's probably going through the cycle or it's probably they are not doing it all the time and therefore there are other influences which go uh, and influence the US bonds. We can expect, for example, jittering about what uh, the Fed is thinking, for example. On the next chart, yep. we see that we have, uh, on the, since 2003, the evolution of the yield on the 10 years. And we have made a projection for what could happen in the next 18 months. And most probably, uh, we believe that we are going to remain in the trading range between 2.5% on the top side and on the lower side, around 175%, as long as uh, there is no return of inflation. That's going to correspond in technical terms to a big downtrend moving into a neutral range before eventually, later on in two or three years, going into an uptrend. And if we go to the very short term, we see that the rising trend of yields since the beginning of May is not totally broken. So uh, here we have to wait and see its impact on other markets, like for example the S&P, but there is no clear signal yet. So we're still waiting for that all-important signal. That's possible. <laughs> Bruno, thank you very much for coming in and piecing it all together. It's been very interesting talking to you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all from Bruno and myself. Please do click back to the Decoscopy website for all the hourly updates. But for now, goodbye.